Assalamu alaikum. Trying to get organized here. This is rocket science. <laughs> you know, I turn off one video and I try to get the camera back on again, and I don't know how to get. Never mind. I'm not going to bore you with. You know, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Yeah, Allah, please send me a technician, someone that will be able to do uh, some things for me. I usually like to be independent and do things on my own. <sighs> but when you can't really handle your own smartphone on YouTube videos, and you don't have the intention to even go read a catalog or figure out how to do it, uh, I, I hope you appreciate that I have other things that I can offer. But be patient with me with every, everything else, OK? Now, one of the things uh, that strikes me uh, in my heart when I read anything about speaking properly, trying to speak kind words only, trying to be appropriate, and trying to just control your tongue, which we all know that's what Prophet Muhammad said we should do. So I'm going to do a hadith now about that, that topic of controlling your tongue. And it's a little, uh, a little bit more than we would just say, you know, hold your tongue. You know your mom would say, hold your tongue and don't say anything. Uh, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Our mom's taught us all of this. Actually, it was my dad. <laughs> anyway, on the authority of Mu'ad bin Jabal, who said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, inform me of a deed which will take me into paradise and keep me away from the fire. And he said, you have asked me about uh, a tremendous matter. But indeed, it is easy for one whom Allah, the exalted, makes it easy. You should worship Allah associating uh, nothing with him. Establish prayer, fast Ramadan, make the pilgrimage to the house, sacred house, it means Mecca, the Kaaba. And then he said, shall I not point out to you the gates of goodness? Fasting is a shield. Charity extinguishes sin as water extinguishes fire. And so does the prayer of one who stands in the middle of the night. And then he recited, this is a verse from the Quran, they forsake their beds invoking their Lord in fear and hope and spend of that which we have provided for them. And no soul knows what he has hidden from, for them of satisfaction as a reward for what they used to do. That's the Quranic verse. Then he said, shall I not inform you of the head of the matter, its pillar, and the peak of its elevation? I said, yes, Messenger of Allah. And he said, the head of the matter is Islam. Submission. Its pillar is the prayer. And the peak of its elevation is jihad. Then he said, shall I not inform you of the foundation of all of that? I said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. So he took hold of his tongue and he said, restrain this. I said, O Prophet of Allah, will we be blamed for what we talk about? He said, may your mother be bereaved of you, O Mu'adh. Does anything topple people into the fire on their faces, or he said, on their noses, except the harvest of their tongue? Sounds very serious, doesn't it? When, when he even, it's not a curse, Prophet Muhammad would not curse, but 
she said, may your mother be bereaved of you? <laughs> Will she miss you? I mean, what would your mom say about your behavior? You know, this tongue thing, it is far more than we ever could have assumed or imagined or would welcome or would agree with or... As you study the Hadith, you get new insight, not into just your own self and your own frailty and foibles and foolishness, but you get a bird's eye view of your entire society. This is Prophet Muhammad warning us that we will be thrown into the fire by the harvest of our tongues. I have to take a deep breath on that one. This isn't just gossiping and swearing and being rude. This is everything we say. And it's not only just that we may be talking too much or saying things that are irrelevant or trite or, or downright mean. What else is there that we say that is completely unnecessary. And actually, you're disobeying a law when you think you have enough time to blab. Now, please don't gang up on me. And please don't call the feminist police on me. <laughs> I mean, they already have my number. They already have a hit out on me because they keep saying women should stay home and take care of their families. Well, Arif, been there, done that. When you've done both, you know, if you have a heart, that the most important thing a woman can do is the home and hearth and the family. No. Someone protect me. It's Allah that's going to protect me because I'm just saying the truth. So I'm going to try to make up for all the nonsense that I talk about by saying the truth in these hadith uh, that I'm going to be setting forward for you all because I feel I have to make up for a lot of mistakes. So this one, uh, and you know, by the way, the word jihad, when he said that this is the utmost, Jihad, yes, it means fighting in the, in the way of Allah. It certainly does. To, to exhaustion, to exert yourself till you have nothing more to give. Yes, it can mean fighting. Yes, it can mean killing. But what it really means is, you know, they say jihad enough. You've heard that. Fight yourself and your, your low inclinations, your laziness, your selfishness, and your inability to turn the other cheek or to look at the other side of the situation. That's what this hadith is about. Inshallah, you've benefited. Salam alaikum.